Hi, this is Mark Costco in Jackson, Mississippi. I'd like to share a case of a GAT procedure on a young, phakic, African-American male with very advanced juvenile open-angle glaucoma. We've made a supratemporal paracentesis as well as an infranasal paracentesis. I'm choosing to fill the eye with viscote uh, to um, uh, make sure that we don't uh, burp viscoelastic out of the eye during our manipulations. Uh, rather, we want to keep the chamber deep so we don't uh, cause iatrogenic uh, cataract. Uh, that was a 2.2 diamond, but we didn't enter all the way. The inner lip of the incision was probably about 1.7 millimeters. We've introduced the LX eye track catheter here. It has a lumen that can um, pump viscoelastic as well as a blinking red fiber optic light. We've turned the patient's head 30 degrees away from ourselves and the microscope 30 degrees towards ourselves. Viscoelastic on the cornea and agonia prism visualizes the nasal angle. Not a super great view here in this recording, but um, uh, what we're going to do is use the needle to make an initial small goniotomy in the nasal angle. And then we will slightly dimple down to show the sort of white uh, appearance of the back wall of Schlem's canal. Uh, then we'll exchange our needle here um, for uh, MST microforceps and we'll introduce the catheter into uh, the um, canal. Um, we'll slowly advance it 360 degrees around and you'll be able to see the blinking red light uh, which demonstrates that we know we've remained in Schlem's Canal and not gone into a false passageway. Every few movements here, I'm telling my assistant, click, click, and she's uh, pumping Helon Pro through the lumen of the catheter uh, to um, hopefully, um, if, if we believe it, uh, uh, to viscodilate and viscoexpand the um, canal and distal collector channel systems some, um, um, uh, or, or at least in my opinion to sort of uh, ease passage of the catheter. Um, you can certainly do this with um, a proline suture uh, as Devendra Grover's group in Texas has popularized and that is, is definitely a cheaper way to do this, but uh, I, I prefer to use the catheter to be able to see uh, where I am at all times. Um, and um, I do like being able to pump uh, the helon through the lumen of the catheter. Uh, it's just very controlled. You can do a similar procedure to what we're doing here with, with the Omni device. Um, I um, I prefer this because I can always see where I am uh, and it just feels safer, probably a little slower, but safer and more controlled. Um, but once we fully advance, we come back to ourselves and grab the distal end um, and we'll irrigate the viscoelastic off the cornea and then just use simple tying forceps to slowly withdraw the catheter and what that's doing is it's coming out as it's unroofing trabecular meshwork, creating a 360 degree goniotomy. We'll put the patient's head and microscope back into primary positions, make an additional infratemporal paracentesis, and we'll do a bimanual INA. Uh, we're not going to re remove all the viscoelastic. We want some to remain to sort of help tamponade uh, potential blood reflux. I would uh, actually leave a lot of viscoelastic uh, if the, the glaucoma wasn't so advanced. I also don't have a super robust episcleral venous fluid wave, uh, which is another reason, in my opinion, to not overly leave the viscoelastic. You will see some hydration of the lens that's not from touch of the actual hardware, but just hydration, and it, it tends to go away. Um, the patient did well. Thank you for watching.